Hi friends, hope you're doing great. I just wanted to update you on my new class. I just released it yesterday, which is threat modeling using Stride. Now, threat modeling is a very, very important topic, which I'm sure you must be aware, especially if you're in cybersecurity. Uh, basically, I made this class because I felt that not many people know what threat modeling is, or if they know, their knowledge is more on a, a what do you say, conceptual level, theoretical level, and they don't know how to practically do it. So the whole point of this class is I've made it. It teaches you, it gives you an introduction about uh, threat modeling, then it gives you an introduction on cybersecurity risk management, and then how threat modeling is really beneficial for this. And I'm gonna go into like multiple case studies with that, and I'll tell you about the tools, even ChatGPT, how you can use that for threat modeling if you want to do that. So this is basically an introduction to this. And as part of this, I am putting in like a free preview of my course. So take a look at it. If you're interested, I'm gonna put a like a coupon uh, within the comment section, you can use that uh, to buy that course. So do leave me some review or feedback that will really help. I believe it's going to be free for the first 100 users. So do let me know your comments and like leave me a rating and a feedback, please. Thanks so much. And let's check out the review, uh, the preview of this course and check out my coupon if you want this. Thanks so much. Okay, guys. So in this chapter, we're going to talk up, we're going to introduce threat modeling now. So in what we did in the previous lesson was we looked at risk management, right? specifically uh, cybersecurity risk management and how wh what's the good things about it but what are the limitations of uh, like cybersecurity risk management and wh how this is why we can understand the value of threat modeling now what is threat modeling so simply put threat modeling is the process of using you know hypothetical scenarios diagrams and basically brainstorming to help you secure your systems as companies are becoming more and more digital and cloud focused ID systems are facing new types of risks and vulnerabilities. You have growing use of mobiles, smartphones, Internet of Things, uh, cloud cloud computing, artificial intelligence, you know. So that's why with threat modeling, it can provide you an enhanced view of systems, something which normal risk management cannot. And you create like data flow diagrams or even graphical representations. You don't need to create data flow diagrams, just graphical representations of your systems. And that will help you to map out the attack path. Okay. It can help you like better collaboration with your IT teams on security, okay? Because proper threat modeling, it requires input from many stakeholders. It's not something you do alone, okay? And by participating in that, your IT teams, they can have a better idea of cybersecurity, you know? It can be like done in a brainstorming session. You don't need any special software. There's no multi-million dollar solution you have to buy and implement, okay? You can do threat modeling with just a piece of pen and paper. That's all that's needed, but you have to understand the discipline, how it works, what are the principles and the process. So in this lesson, we're going to do a high level overview of threat modeling, okay? So this is the technical definition from OASC, which is that it's a structured approach of identifying and prioritizing potential threats to a system, determining the value that potential mitigations would have in reducing or neutralizing the threats. It's very simple to what we talked about earlier, right? But when we go into deep, we're gonna say, but yeah, so threat modeling, it works by identifying the different type of threat agents that can cause harm to your application and you model it, right? So you adopt the perspective of malicious attackers to see how much damage can can do. You perform like a thorough analysis of your software architecture and your like documentation, and you get a much deeper understanding of the system. Usually the best time to do it is during the design phase, but you can do it later on. If you haven't done it before, it's not like you, do, you can't do it now, but it's a great way like, and it really helps developers also find vulnerabilities and became, become aware of security flaws in their design code and the other configurations, okay? So, so I talked about, say, the technical definition right now. So what is like the simple definition? So simply put, threat modeling is these four things. So four questions you ask, okay? You, you ask, what are we building, okay? Well, what's the thing you're building? Application, software, whatever it is. What can go wrong with it? Okay, what do we do about it? And how do we know we did a good job? And in addressing those questions, you start with the best tool which has ever been given to IT, IT people, which is a whiteboard. You know, simple whiteboard, you can draw on it and try to understand. But we looked at all these techniques. But remember, anytime you get confused about threat modeling, you can just come back to this slide, okay, and try to understand. That's the simplest thing. Anytime you get confused, this is the simplest slide to come back to and these four questions, okay? And everything in this course has been helped to design, has been designed to help you answer one of those questions. So we're going to walk through these questions using a simple web application as an example and after you've seen that you'll be in a much better like a position to do a deep dive into threat modeling like i said this is the beginning of threat modeling okay so let's take a look okay 
So uh, assuming we have a simple web application, okay? It's accessed through a browser, it's hosted on a web server, and you might have a, like a database at the back end, right? So there are a lot of ways, diagrams are a good way to communicate what you are building. There are a lot of ways to diagram software. If you, if you remember cyber security risk management we talked about, there was no requirement for a diagram. Threat model forces you to diagram the application, okay? Because it understands that the best way to visualize the threats is through a diagram, okay? So there are a lot of ways to diagram software. And like I said, you can start with a whiteboard, a pen and paper of how data flows through the system. So we, like I said, we are gonna talking about a simple web application with a web browser, web server, where some logic will be there in a database, okay? So, so like I said, you use whatever works for you. But think of these, this is a very, very important part of threat modeling. This always start with this diagram. And like uh, the good companies who mature in their threat modeling, they actually put these threat diagrams within their, their version control, you know? They actually control the changes because it becomes so important. So this is the first step, okay? What are we building? We try to think about that. Now, uh, the next step is thinking about what can go wrong, right? Like, uh, uh, and like thinking about the boundaries. So how do we like define the boundaries, okay? Like, and the trust levels we are gonna talk about. So like, if you decide like where, what are the sensitive areas? Like what are the trust levels? So this application, is it a website for the whole internet? Is it an internet site? Is it a database site? So adding boundaries. So here we can see, okay, this application will be public facing. And this web application server will be on, on like in a public facing subnet, like a DMZ or somewhere, right? So that's one with zone. The database server is will be in a separate subnet. So you can bounder that off. So that is in a much more sensitive area, right? And adding boundaries to show who controls what is a very great way to improve the diagram. You can easily see the threats that will cross those boundaries are likely important ones. And it'll be a good place to start identifying threats, right? So you can see that the application, it is, accessible through the browser. Maybe it'll be accessible through other things also, right? And it's through the application that you can access the web server. And the web server is the jumping point into the database server. So now you understand, you start thinking about the threats from that perspective, okay? And this is how, now you're modeling threats. You're thinking about, okay, well, what am I building? This is how the application looks like, right? So, uh, so this is like, now we have understood, we have a web application layer, an application layer, and a database layer. So these, uh, boundaries, like we said, they're called trust boundaries and you should draw them wherever different people control different things or different systems control different things. These can be like uh, when you have sensitive accounts, maybe network changes, uh, different physical computers, different subnets, maybe you're crossing up boundaries, uh, almost anywhere where privileges are changing. Okay, so from the application to the, uh, from the web application to the web application server, it'll be using some different type of ID, right? And then the application server is talking to the database it's crossing a boundary, right? So you should draw these stress boundaries and you can put like these labels which I put here, like a web and app layer, DD, the database layer, the browser itself, it, it's in the public, right? So it's not trusted. So now you've understood, right? And now not if you understood it, we can think about what can go wrong. Now we're gonna think about, now that you have those understandings, right? So what can go wrong? So identifying threats initially, it can seem intimidating to a lot of people, right? And don't worry about it if you're doing it for the first time, the whole point of this course is to gently walk you through threat identification. And we will look at stride later on, which is like a abbreviation, it's, a threat, it's a, like a threat categorization uh, methodology of things that can go wrong in security. So it stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. Don't worry about all those things right now. Like if you find it like, a, what am I talking about? Don't worry about it. But just what I said before that we want to, now that we've understood the, we have a high level idea of the application. Now we can think about threats here. Okay, so uh, let, let's talk about, I mean, and remember, one thing please you have to remember, there is no right or wrong way. You're starting out, you're just visualizing brainstorming here, right? Start with always external entities. Not sure, like think of like, uh, which are the external entities where you can access. Now there's a browser here, right? So the browser, you can probably, it's accessing the web application. What is stopping somebody else from trying to access that application, right? Right? What if there's a malicious guy who's scanning the application and trying to break through it? Okay. What if there is a malicious insider within your corporate company and he is trying to access the web application layer and the database layer? So these are the things you have to think about, right? What are the th threats which can happen? Don't try to think of as many threats as you can. Okay. There is no magic number and this will really help you out. The brainstorming is the most traditional way to do it. Uh, don't do it alone. You should always get a list of the experienced people you know in your company, which are very familiar with the architecture 
and do it on a whiteboard do it on a piece of paper let them go think that tell them this is the architecture what can go wrong and how good this will be the quality of this session is really depends on the experience of the brainstormers and the amount of time you spend right so how do you know maybe the web browser is being by the use by the person you expect what happens if somebody modifies data in a database is it okay for information to go from one cross boundary to the other without being encrypted these are the questions you will want to ask and don't worry about asking dumb questions uh, believe me some question you might ask nobody would have thought of it before i've seen this many many times so brainstorming really is the best way threat modeling should never be done alone you should always do it with the team okay so this is where and now we what we do is we have a decent like a, we'll have a list of risks right so here we're talking about compromising the web application maybe an attacker attacker can compromise it through some vulnerability maybe there's a compromise of the web server somebody exploits a patch or inside a thread based a malicious database admin right so you have a decent size of list of threats so and what you'll do is ideally you should go through each of them and address each thread right you can mitigate it like we talked in risk management before mitigate it eliminate it transfer it or accept it right so we're going to look at all of them thing and understand what like uh, how to fix it okay but this is basically what we are trying to do here and uh, so this this was a very very high level a thousand feet view of a basic threat model we're going to dive deep into this don't worry but this was just to give you an idea of how it works okay and most importantly now how do we know we did a good job right uh, there are many ways of asking this validation of your threat model you should always do they're like you can ask simple questions you can ask people does the diagram accurately reflect the system are we identifying all the critical points does it all cover all the critical uh, uh, controls basically you are checking the model uh, checking what you've looked for in each threat uh, and checking your test so you you would want to like validate this frequently you should always ensure that the final model matches your actual application right if it doesn't how would you know you found the right threats right so always try to that's why i said try to involve the people who can look at the diagram they can ask these questions right is this complete uh, is it accurate does it cover all the security controls we have and can i start the next version of this diagram without making any changes these are the things we talked about so now i hope you understood how at a very very high level what threat modeling is we're going to do a deep dive now into a more detailed case study but these are the advantages guys when we talked about threat modeling when you do it correctly it can provide a clear line of sight for an application and help to justify you all the security things you're doing right and threat modeling processes it helps you document your security threats and then you can make smart decisions about how to address otherwise you'll just be making you'll be firefighting right one day it'll be one issue the other it'll be an issue so you can really help to justify you can clearly identify your threats you can focus your security efforts and you can show what are the controls here and believe me when i say it can show flaws which other assessments will not reveal the things you can find at the threat model you will not possibly find within a source code review or a penetration test or a vulnerability assessment okay a well documented threat model it provides assurances that are useful in explaining your security posture maybe you have an audit right and then you can show this okay so it really it's a one of the best tools and i i would say one of the most underrated tools people don't do it enough it'll help you detect problems early on okay even before coding begins and it can spot design flaws which your other like i mentioned they will not catch right it can evaluate new forms of attack it can maximize your testing budget because then you can focus it can identify new types of security requirements and it can help you to think think out of the box okay so and what are the common oh sorry uh yeah and what are the common mistakes which happen within threat modeling right a lot of times i've seen this first of all it's not doing it early enough a threat model will be more effective during the design phase without any doubt you can do it before but that's the best way of doing it and another problem is i've seen that people don't do it enough they do it maybe once a year and they forget about it no you have to make it part of your processes and i'm going to talk about that how you can do it and another mistake i sometimes people they go to the other extreme they think that it will replace the other assessments they have they think we don't need source code reviews vulnerability assessment penetration testing no all of those things you do need right and so th that's very important also and uh, also uh, like people make the mistake they think that you can only do it during, during, during the design phase i mean you, you if you haven't done it during the design phase uh, you don't need to do it no you have to do it regularly okay and some see it like an optional exercise for if i'm doing penetration testing and code review why do i need threat modeling no you still need it right so penetration testing and code reviews vulnerability assessments all of them are good but they can't substitute for threat modeling okay so you need to think of that and not involving all the stakeholders another like big mistake 
not involving the experts, people who know the application inside out, trying to do it alone. Cybersecurity teams think that, oh no, we own the threat model. I don't need anybody else. Get the team involved. You will not believe how many issues you will find, right? So, and one thing I always recommend, there's a good reason to conduct threat models after deployments also, because that will help you really understand whether you did it correctly or not. So this is what I wanted to talk about guys at a very high level. And now we're gonna do a more deep dive in the next lesson. But listen, when I, believe me when I say threat modeling is not complicated. Many developers and security people are intimidated by the idea of threat modeling. They think you, you need like 20 years of experience to do that. No, you can break it up into workable tasks, which I'll talk about and try to do as many case studies as you can. And that's what we're gonna do. Even the most complex of architectures will become very simple. And then the key step is to start small and slowly, slowly, build yourself up, build up your skills, and then you will really see the benefits coming in. So I hope you understood this, guys. I hope it gave you a good idea about threat modeling at a very high level. In the next lesson, we were gonna do a, like a look at threat modeling in detail, okay? And we're gonna do a case study of a sample application because that is the only and the best way to learn threat modeling. The more you do it, it's like a muscle. The more you work out, the stronger you'll become. So, okay, I hope this was useful to you guys and I'll see you in the next lesson.